Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Wow, what a place. <laughs> this, I mean, creative mornings in Stockholm wins by far when it comes to the setting. It's, uh, I'm humbled to be here and um, I thank you very much for waking up and being here with me this morning. I would like to share a few ideas on how Evernote is building the modern workspace because this is extremely relevant for creative people like us. How many of you are actually using Evernote? Yes, <laughs> thank you very much. We have recently reached 100 million users worldwide. And this is really astonishing because most of our growth has been organic. This means that it's been basically word of mouth. People telling other people that Evernote is great and they should be using it. So this is how we got to 100 million users. And we are building the 100-year startup. There are two important aspects. The 100-year means that we are here to come up with something that is changing the world, something that makes a difference. We don't want to build a product, get rich, and go and live somewhere on an island happily ever after. It's really about coming together with brilliant, talented people and creating something that helps the world become smarter. We have recently celebrated our sixth anniversary, so we are 6% along the way. We are six years old, this is us, and uh, there's still a long way to go. The other aspect that I was mentioning before, the startup aspect, is extremely important as well, because as you grow, and we are a truly global company, we have been global from day one, it is really important to keep the startup feeling. And this means that you have to come up with creative ways on a daily basis. If we are to look at our success factors, what made Evernote be what it is today? I would say the very first one and the most important one is the fact that we believe that we are on a mission. Everybody working at Evernote wants to help make the world smarter, wants to help people like you and yourself have a tool that allows them to elegantly surf through the complexity of life. So it is really important that we are united when it comes to this mission, and, and we are a bit idealistic, so when it comes also to designing projects, it's always a lot of um, creativity involved because we really think that the sky is the limit, so we like to think big. The second success factor is related to uh, the simple fact that we don't really believe in, in competition, and this is not in an arrogant way. We believe that life is not a competitive game, so it's not like in order for us to win, somebody else has to lose. For us, life is more like playing in an orchestra, where you may have you know, different people playing the same instruments, but together they create something great. So there's this no-zero-sum game belief that I think helps us also achieve greatness. Because we get a lot of questions like, you know, how about your competitors, Google or Microsoft, and so on and so forth. And then we go back and we say, but look at our partners. They are Google and Microsoft. We were, by example, uh, for example, we were the first app to be uh, featured on the Google Glass. And this is because we believe that actually you have a bigger benefit when you partner and you collaborate with people than if you go out and you say, oh, these are our competitors, we don't want to work with you, we want to do something to destroy you. So really collaboration is something that is extremely, extremely important for Evernote. The third success factor has to do with uh, business model and business model innovation. Now, our business model is actually uh, not so sophisticated, but it has to do with uh, the way that we believe um, business should be done, which is in a very transparent and honest way. There are no tricks. We have three main streams of revenue, 
and they are Evernote Premium, Evernote Business, and the physical products we sell in the Evernote market. So we will never monetize on your data. And this was extremely important from the very beginning because we ask people to trust us with their data. So if you come and monetize and you do data mining, then you will quickly lose people's trust. So this is something that um, helped us grow in the past years. This is also an important success factor when it comes to failure, that we actually we don't believe in failure. What is failure at the end of the day? And this is something, especially here in Europe, I think we still need to learn a lot when it comes to failure because there's so much social pressure. And this is something that in, uh, in the Silicon Valley, the first time you're there, you realize that, wow, this is an interesting way of looking at the world. What is failure? Because actually you can try a lot of things. Some of them may not work, so what? At least you've learned something, and it is really important, the learning curve, so that you learn fast, and then you adapt, and you go on. So this allows you to develop many features. This allows you to test a lot of different um, scenarios, also in communication, that uh, would not be possible if you would have a very uh, rigid mind frame. So um, we are failing every day, and we are actually very proud of it. And whenever a, you know, a project does not really work the way we wanted it to work, don't expect that somebody will finger point at you and will say, bad project, <laughs> bad team leader. No, it's not about that. It's really coming together, trying to learn, okay, what worked, what didn't work, and what can we do better? Then um, it's all about life work integration. And this is something that uh, has to do the way we perceive working today. You know, uh, there's a lot of talk about life and work balance. For us, this is no longer the case, because especially with the technology and the devices we have today, we believe that it's actually a question of life and work integration. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to work harder. It just means that you have to work smarter. Life work integration means that also you're working today, and people uh, like yourself and myself, uh, we normally work because we do something that we really like, we are passionate about. So this is our life, it's not really our work, right? So when it comes to doing something that you're passionate about, then why shouldn't you be using technology that allows you to achieve greatness? We have been personally very frustrated when looking at business software in general, and we said, okay, you know, you're spending most of your, of your time at work, and why should you, as an employee, when you're at work, be punished to use some, I don't know, middle-aged devices and some lousy software, you know, in a cubicle, like really being there in your corner? Especially today, when you have, you know, the, the iPad, Retina displays, and all these beautiful apps, why shouldn't you, in your workspace, be actually a happy person using some amazing technology and uh, trying to, to make the most out of it. And this is when we decided to create Evernote Business a couple of years ago, because it was also for us um, based on, on the fact that, you know, you're not really thinking only business nine to five, so everything related to your personal life will come afterwards. You're constantly switching. You would lie to yourself if you would say that this is not true. Even if your boss says, okay, listen, you have to, you know, don't check Facebook, think only about your projects from nine to five, don't do anything. Your brain is not working like this. It's normal that you will switch from different thoughts, ideas. And for us, it was important to come up with an interface that allows you to easily switch from professional to personal thoughts, that allows you to, to gather whatever is important to you on whatever device you're using. So Evernote Business for us was a mini revolution in the world of business software, giving you the freedom you deserve. Now, we get a lot of questions around, but what is actually Evernote? Like, what does it do? Is it like a note-taking application? Which, of course, if you think of the name, some people may believe that it is. But actually, Evernote is an augmented intelligence platform. And the augmented intelligence is a very, very critical and important part of what we do every day. Augmented versus artificial intelligence. If you remember in the 50s, there was a lot of talk about artificial intelligence, and you had this idea that you know, you'll have these robots conquering the world and you know, taking over men and everything else. 
and um, there was a really a nice story around um, Gary Kasparov, the chess master. When he was beaten by IBM's Big Blue, by a machine, he then had an epiphany. And then he realized that actually the future of humanity is not necessarily man against machine, but is men and machine working together to make men smarter. So augmented intelligence at Evernote means that we don't want Evernote to think for you, but Evernote should be a natural extension of your needs and it should empower you. It should actually anticipate what you want. To give you an example, if you're using Evernote and if it's connected to your calendar, the moment you're stepping into the meeting, Evernote will know the person you're meeting with, so it will automatically suggest a title so you don't have to type. Related notes are also uh, a very important aspect, and uh, this is something that I'm going to refer to later. So when it comes to augmented intelligence, the world has completely changed today. And only if you think also, you know, things we are doing on a daily basis like writing. Well, um, when you write something, if you're using um, one of the softwares out there, you know, you will get an A4 paper in front of you on a computer, which is like, okay, this may have been useful like 10 years ago, but what is doing, you know, what, how can we use this today? Um, when you write in Evernote, you have the possibility to add text. If you're writing with pen on paper, you have the possibility to actually take a picture of your handwritten notes and add them to that note. At the same time, you can add audio notes, you can add images, and I think this is the way we write today. Plus, you start on your desktop, but you move to your iPad or to your phone. So writing has evolved, and we are here to really try to make sure that you can write in a modern way. Also, when it comes to finding, we believe that Evernote is really great because at the end of the day, nobody likes searching for stuff, right? So it's all about finding. And you can um, just use a keyword and Evernote will go through whatever documents, be it, you know, images, handwritten text, whatever you have, and will give that to you in a matter of seconds exactly when you need it. And collecting is also an important aspect because most of you, I'm sure, are um, collecting a lot of articles and sometimes it's really difficult, okay, where, where shall I save it, where shall I put this? And it's really easy when you can just send it to Evernote and then you don't even need to worry about, okay, should I come up with a very sophisticated system to archive all my stuff that I have clipped from the web? It's just there and you can get it whenever you want. And then um, there's also the presentation aspect in Evernote. I don't know how many of you are using our new feature called presentation mode. This was actually made in Zurich. I'm very proud of it. This is part of my team. And this goes back to meetings and business uh, and business meetings in general. And um, for us it was, okay, listen, if you're not delivering a TED presentation where it's really, you know, important to have uh, nice images, you have to have some nice text. If it's just a team meeting, so it's you and your co-workers getting together to discuss something, why should you spend time in you know, creating this uh, super sophisticated presentation and try to, to think like for hours, okay, how shall I structure it, what, what should come here and there? Why shouldn't it be as easy as selecting a couple of notes that are relevant to the meeting and pressing what button, and then Evernote would actually generate the presentation for you. And uh, we are extremely proud of presentation mode, but this is completely changing the way we work because you don't have to worry anymore. Like you select your, your notes, you press presentation mode, Evernote does something magic, and there you go, you have a nice presentation. And even uh, more important is that while you're presenting, you can actually edit the notes in real time. Because what happens after a meeting, somebody goes back to their desk and sends another email saying to wrap up what we have discussed, this and that and that. Whereas like this, everything is in it in real time. So presentation mode definitely uh, is changing the game when it comes to business meetings. And well, with business meetings in general, we do have a problem and we are a bit frustrated. So at Evernote, we have actually a rule, which is, you know, uh, basically stupid meetings are banned. Now, what is a stupid meeting? A stupid meeting is a meeting 
that you know you attend, and once it's over, uh, you feel that you have totally wasted your time. So it has to be for us. You have the right to call for a meeting if you're a great person to meet. So this means that you do your homework, you send the agenda, everybody is aware of what needs to be discussed and what you want to get out of that meeting. And it should ideally, um, it should not last longer than 25 minutes. So in our meeting rooms at Evernote, we have a gong. So at every 25 minutes, <laughs> you hear it just to make sure that you're not going over. And it helps, it helps a lot. Context, this is a super, super exciting new thing related to augmented intelligence as well. When we have designed Evernote Business, one of the ideas was related to the fact that there's so much hidden knowledge inside organizations, because even if you're a small team, it is not humanly possible for you to know what your colleagues know. Now, imagine a world when you start working on a project and suddenly you have access to all your coworkers' knowledge. For us, this was a dream, and we made it come true via related notes. So if you type something and you're using Evernote Business, Evernote Business will first suggest some of the related notes from what you have saved, but then it brings in also everything that your colleagues may know about that specific project, which is just amazing because it happens on a daily basis that you, know, you start working on something only to find out that the person sitting like three de desks uh, next to you was working on something similar or may have a really good tip. And um, a couple of weeks ago, we had our Evernote conference in San Francisco and we have uh, made a big announcement because we've taken context even further. So the idea was, okay, you have related notes, your related notes, your coworkers' related notes, but what if you would have actually real life information coming from media. And this is when, or from, I don't know, LinkedIn, for example. And this is when we have announced our partnership with Dow Jones and uh, Wall Street Journal and Factiva, making it possible for you, if you're using Evernote um, Business, to actually, the moment you're, you're starting a project, to get real life information from Wall Street Journal. So this means that if I start typing creative mornings, in Evernote, not only do I get everything that I know, I have, you know, my, my network knows about uh, creative mornings, but then everything that was in the news related to that topic. And this is really for us the um, smartest way to work, because again, it's not about searching, like who wants to spend their time looking for stuff? We shouldn't. Like we should use our time to connect the dots, to come up with ideas, to, to try to come up with something great. And technology should be there to assist us, to give us, to anticipate, to make sure that we have everything we need to get there. And one big thing about Evernote Business is that, and we get this feedback a lot, is that it makes even uh, big companies feel small again. And we are so happy and we are thrilled that we are able to bring this startup feeling back to the big companies. Because again, you know, having the possibility to work closely with your colleagues and discover knowledge helps a lot in the decision-making process and then helps you as a group become smarter. And this, of course, has a direct impact on the revenue and on the bottom line. Now, uh, this is um, a picture of our headquarters in Redwood City. I just wanted to add that we have 11 offices around the world and um, in Europe, we do have our hub in Zurich. We are opening a small developers um, bureau office in Lyon in France. But we are always looking for talented, smart people. So if you feel that Evernote is a kind of company that you would love to work for at one point in your life, feel free to contact me. And then I would like to wrap up by letting you with this very simple idea and encouraging you to think big, because really, the sky is the limit. And you should not be afraid to fail. And especially in the creative field, you know, I'm sure that there are so many things that you can achieve. Don't let you uh, be um, stopped or influenced by social pressure, by peer pressure. Just go for it and think big, and you'll see. Life is going to be a nice, open highway for you. So together, we can do it. Thank you very much.